Hey, this is Aaron Newcomb. On this episode of Floss Weekly, Guillermo Gamaral joins me uh, to talk about OSCON, which is one of the premier open source conferences sponsored by O'Reilly. You're not going to want to miss it. It's coming up right now on Floss Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Floss Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Floss Weekly with Aaron Newcomb and Guillermo Amaral, episode 344, recorded on July 8th, 2015. OSCON Preview. This episode is brought to you by DigitalOcean, simple and fast cloud hosting built for developers. Deploy an SSD cloud server in 55 seconds. Try it today for free. Visit DigitalOcean.com. And once you sign up, be sure to enter the promo code FLOSS, that's FLOSS, in the billing section for a $10 credit. Welcome to Floss Weekly, the show where we talk about free Libre open source software. Uh, that's what the show stands for. That's what those letters mean. In case you're new to this program, welcome. Uh, we love having new people watch our show. You might be expecting Randall Schwartz. He is not here today. He's actually down at Fizzly, which is a, a wonderful open source conference down in Brazil. If you ever have the chance to get down there, I highly recommend uh, that you go down and check that out because it is a really good conference to go to. Lots of activity and excitement down there about open source software. And so uh, I think he's giving a couple presentations down there or something like that. Uh, but we're not here to talk about Fizzly. We're here to talk about another open source conference. We'll get to that in a minute. But first, let me bring on my co-host, my lovely co-host, Guillermo, are you there? I am here. I, you know, I, I wanted to do, actually do a spinning intro like this. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, know, it's yeah, never I'm good, here. It's never good to do live demos on the show. You know, if you, if you haven't done it before, I've learned that lesson the hard way many times. So live demos never work. So the spinning thing, you know, you fall off the chair, you go crazy. Uh, yes. <laughs> it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be good. What are you up to these days? I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, well, I don't know. I, I've been doing a lot of videos now. Uh, I'm trying to move from the uh, podcasting, you know, uh, audio podcasting world into the uh, video world. Uh, and uh, as you can see, I've been working a lot, so I have a lot of mess in behind me now. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. How about you? How 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 is everything going? Uh, things are going great up here, uh, lovely California. In fact, I think I'm going to see you soon, hopefully in person, but we'll get to that at the end of the show when we do our plugs. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, Benicia Makerspace actually is taking up the majority of my time. We have our grand opening this weekend, uh, so we'll actually be having members come in. Our space is filled out with all this equipment, but uh, we don't want to talk about that. We're here to talk about something more near and dear to our hearts, at least as far as this show is concerned, um, and that is open source software and OSCON. Uh, we're going to be talking about OSCON in just a little bit, and uh, that's coming up very soon. Guillermo, have you ever been to OSCON? Uh, no, not really, uh, but I have heard about it. Yeah, I've heard about it too. In fact, I've never been either. Um, you know, what I what I said when I moved out to California, what I said was that's one of the things I want to do is go to OSCON because I'll be closer. Um, I used to go to uh, uh, Ohio Linux Fest quite a bit um, and uh, when I was out in Ohio. And then um, I just haven't had a chance to go to OSCON. So I'm actually quite interested in learning. This won't be really an insider show, I don't think, um, because I haven't been, you haven't been. So we're going to learn a lot today about OSCON and what's coming up um, for OSCON in just a minute. But before that... Let's uh, get to something before we bring on our guests. Let's get to something else we need to take care of, and that is uh, to talk about our sponsor, which is DigitalOcean. Uh, whether you're an experienced code warrior or just getting started, you need flexible, reliable, and affordable hosting. That's right. DigitalOcean provides developers with droplets, which are virtual private servers that can be customized and deployed quickly to host websites, web apps, production applications, personal projects, virtual desktops, almost anything you can think of with full root access. That's very important uh, for folks like us that like to get into the command line and start hacking around. Um, DigitalOcean is built for developers. Like I said, it's used for over 400,000 of them. Uh, you can deploy, configure your droplets in a streamlined control panel or a simple API. Uh, you can choose your OS. They support Ubuntu, CentOS, Debian, Fedora, all the uh, various uh, Linux distributions that you like to use. One-click uh, uh, one install always 
allows you to quickly deploy apps like Django, Docker, Drupal, LAMP, uh, you name it, you can deploy it pretty much uh, with DigitalOcean. All servers are built on hex core machines with dedicated ECC RAM and RAID SSD storage, so they're going to be very, very fast. In fact, they have up to 20 CPUs, 64 gig of RAM, and 640 gig of SSD hard drive space. These are, well, I tell you, these are really nice, nicely uh, 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 provisioned servers here. Highly scalable. Um, they provide auto backups, snapshots to let you easily clone, deploy, and resize droplets as you grow. You can deploy servers in regions all over the world with gigabit speeds. Uh, really, really nice service from DigitalOcean. And it's so easy to get started. You can deploy an SSD-based cloud server in as little as 65 seconds. Uh, excuse me, 55 seconds. So 10 seconds faster than I said. I can't believe it. Uh, so DigitalOcean has incredibly, has incredibly affordable and straightforward pricing. Servers start at only $5 per month. There's also hourly pricing available for those pop-up projects that you need to take care of, starting at less than a penny per hour. But we're going to make it so that you can get started today and deploy an SSD cloud server for free. That's right, for free. All you have to do is visit, visit digitalocean.com and create an account. And once you confirm your email and account information, go to the billing section and enter the promo code FLOSS. That's F-L-O-S-S -S, for a free $10 credit. So that's plenty to get you started and explore what DigitalOcean can do. That's digitalocean.com. And once you sign up, enter the code FLOSS, F-L-O-S-S, -S, in the billing section for a $10 credit. And we thank DigitalOcean for their support of FLOSS Weekly. So now let's bring on our guest. Rachel, are you there? I am here. Now, How Rachel, are you doing? good. I, you know, I, I worked on your last name before the show to make sure I could get it right. So let me see. It's Romul Romulitis? Romulitis? <laughs> Romuliotis. Oh, my word. I got it wrong. I knew we we're having some technical difficulties before the show started. I knew I was going to lose it because of that. Uh, I was practicing in my head until until uh, we started having technical difficulties. Well, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. The first thing I want to do is invite you both to an OzCon as my guest because I can't believe you haven't been to one. So I know you might not be able to make it this year, but next year I want to see you guys in Austin, Texas. Awesome. Awesome. Yes, I'd love to come. I mean, it's one of those shows that I've always said I wanted to come to um, and just for whatever reason, just have never gotten a chance. I don't know if it's the time of year, things get busy. I don't know what it is, um, but it's certainly the it's on my bucket list. Um, and uh, yeah, it sounds it sounds like so much fun. I, I keep hearing about it from Randall and other folks and uh, it just sounds like a, a wonderful conference. So how long has OSCON been going on? This is the 18th year of OzCon, if you can believe it. And I feel like the world of software has just changed in the past two decades. And and I hope that you can see that OzCon has changed with it and actually helped play a part uh, in that change over the last two decades. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I know it's it's probably, well, I don't know. It's definitely one of the longest running uh, software shows, I think, um, out there. There may be a couple that are older, but I mean, this one definitely um, is is one that has been going on for so long. And you're right; a lot of things have changed in the past. Even in the past few years, things have changed. If you look at the rise of Android and some other things, and we'll get into all that in a minute. But uh, I want to talk a little bit more about some of the basics of OSCON first, um, sure. and, and we'll get into that. So, um, if I wanted to attend, uh, how do I how do I do that? How much do I have to pay? And uh, how long is the conference? And all, uh, give me some of those details. Sure. So the best way to find out information is to go to OzCon.com, which I believe is showing below me right now. And we have a, a variety of passes. You can uh, go for the five-day pass, which includes either a training course or uh, tutorials and three days of sessions. So we really pack it in there. You can uh, get just a training course pass. You could get a tutorials pass. You could get just the sessions pass. Uh, and then you can also get uh, just an expo hall pass for as little as $50. So there's definitely options uh, there. And, and, and the cost ranges from $50 on up to, I think, $2,500 maybe. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, I mean, it sounds like there's a little something for everybody. Do they do the training sessions on different days, I'm assuming, than the in the general yes. sessions? So this year, uh, OzCon is July 20th through the 24th. The tutorials and the training courses will be on July 20th and 21st. And then all of the sessions will be on the 22nd through the 24th. Oh, great, great. Um, so what should I expect? Uh, what kind of sessions generally are delivered 
um, and and what and and also, I mean, highlight the training as well because that's important to folks too. Sure. I mean, so the fun thing about OzCon is that it covers so much material. And that's also the difficult part of OzCon. So we actually, for training courses, we have three different ones. Uh, we have uh, microservices, which is the hotness right now. We have an introduction to Go and an introduction to Swift. So those are two-day training courses where you really, you come in and by the end, you're going to be able to go out and solve a problem that you have, finish a project, and you're going to have some takeaways, some actual takeaways with that. The tutorials is where the choices get more difficult. I believe there's 38 this year, and they range anywhere from, we have one on Rust, which, as you know, is an emerging language. We have ones on uh, Cassandra. We have ones on, uh, the most popular ones are microservices, containers, as is no, probably not a surprise to you either. And um, semi-surprising to me were that the uh, security tutorials are really uh, the ones that have really... Um, sold out the most. So they, uh, they're they actually starting to sell out at this point, but they've had the most interest. So they're, okay. honestly, there's something for everyone. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, OSCON is a little bit different than other open source conferences. Well, I don't know if it's different. You, you tell me. You straighten me out if I get this wrong. Um, sure. But OSCON is... is um, Sponsored by O'Reilly, um, which I love O'Reilly. I don't have any problems with O'Reilly. I'm just saying it's it's a sponsored conference in in that it's not is it or is it still a community conference or is it uh, so, more of a you, you, tell me what it is? Yeah, so it's a, it's a conference that we put on uh, as as a company, and there is a sponsorship ecosystem, and so we have lots and lots of different uh, sponsors that are at the event. However, what I like about OzCon is that it still has a community feel, and there are lots of individuals that have been with the uh, the conference for a while that help us, uh, the program chairs, figure out what that program is. And I think the important thing is that again, we look for it to reflect what people in the community need in open source. And um, while we have the sponsors, we think that's an added bonus in the expo hall for the people that are in attendance. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not a bad thing. I, I, I just was, it is, it is a little bit different um, in the fact that it's, that it um, is sponsored by O'Reilly. But, um, you know, I have a, I have a soft spot for O'Reilly just with all everything that they've done, um, you know, especially for the maker community. Uh, with yep. Make Magazine and all that stuff coming out of O'Reilly and all their books and everything. I've got, you know, I, I can I can see five books right now on my shelf from O'Reilly. Um, so I, I just wanted to point that out, that it is a little bit different than other uh, um, maybe community-based conference. But I think the content probably is going to be similar, if not um, better in some ways, because it's run more like a, a, a you know a standard conference. Uh, you might be able to attract some some speakers that you you wouldn't see otherwise. Speaking of that, uh, can you give us a little a little preview of who's who's lined up to speak this year? Wow. So we have 140 sessions. So there's a lot of people uh, that are going to be speaking. Uh, some of the keynotes, we have Martin Fowler coming, which is going to be really great. We have uh, George Dyson that is going to come and talk about analog computing. Uh, gosh, who do we have talking? We have uh, Kelsey Hightower talking about uh, Kubernetes and CoreOS. We have, uh, let's see... Uh, we have people talking about uh, GitHub. Uh, let me see, what was her name? I don't remember. But I mean, we have, we, honestly, we have so many people, it's hard to keep track of. We get about uh, 1,200 uh, proposals and we whittle that down to about 10%. And honestly, it's a beast of a program, but it's a program that I am super, super proud of, I think. And we transitioned this year to a little bit different style track system. And uh, I'm, I think it's going to be really great. I think people will really like it. And it's the kind of thing where you could stay in a track if you want it all day or you can or you can bounce around. Right. And that's important because I know when I attend these conferences, you always get uh, a lot of times they have tracks and you get this one or two sessions where you're just like, you know, I don't really need this one. And it's nice to be able to bounce outside of that and go to something else that might be interesting that's offered. Um, sure. You know, before we get too far, Rachel, we should we should probably also ask you what your role is or what do you... Um, I don't think we covered that. So what's your role either with O'Reilly or, or with OSCON? Sure. So with OSCON, I have the privilege of being a program chair. And it's very exciting to me. This is my first year. So I'll be the program chair uh, for OSCON in Portland, but also in Amsterdam in October. And uh, at O'Reilly, in addition to doing that, I'm a strategic content director for all of our programming content. So uh, OSCON is one of the events that kind of takes 
a lot of what we do and puts it together for the developers so they can, you know, go and look at something on microservices, look at something on security, look at something on containers. Mm, wow. I didn't realize there were so many OSCONs around now. So there's, how many are there? You said uh, there's Austin, Portland. So there's, there's two a year. So this year it's going to be Portland in July okay. and Amsterdam in October. And next year is when we are going to, uh, go to Austin in May. So we're doing two a year for right now, but you never know, sky's the limit. It's a big world. Could, so could the, end up going somewhere else. Yeah, I'm, I'm always used to it being in, in Portland, but um, mm -hmm. so they're going to they're gonna move it to Austin just for next year and see how that goes? Or We're going to do that. You know, we wanted to basically make sure that everyone has the opportunity to go to OzCon. Portland is just a fantastic city, and I'm sure we'll be back. We just want to try uh, different areas, see if we get different crowds, um, just check it out. You know, like I, I feel lucky that we've been able to be in Portland, but I, I want to make sure that we like spread the love basically. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting because Austin is such a happening place right now for mm -hmm. technology. And, and of course, Portland always has been. And um, so they almost, in my mind, they almost seem like sister cities in a, in, a, in a way in terms of their, what's going on in the field. I mean, I know they're also quite different, but um, certainly in terms of where the action is, both cities are um, are, are great places to be for, for technology. Um, and technology has changed. I mean, that's something that we wanted to talk about too. I mean, how have you seen, I don't know how long you've been involved with this. Maybe you can tell us that too, but, um, how have you seen, uh, what kind of changes have you seen, uh, since you started this or just in general over the years, how has the conference changed? So the conference, you know, I've been to the conference, I think, four times now, and it really was, um, it started out as a Pearl conference, and it's always been very heavy in Pearl. And what we wanted to do is that we wanted to shift it so that it reflected what was happening out in the programming community. So while we still wanted to have Pearl, we wanted to make sure that we covered other languages. And further than that, we wanted to make sure that we were uh, not talking in languages because I don't think that people any longer are like, I'm a Python programmer. It's more that you're you know, creating apps and you're going to use what makes sense for that. You're going to use uh, Flask if it, if it makes sense or um, you might use something in Java. You might use a Spring framework. So there's all different types of things. So what we found was that instead of identifying as, um, you know, with a language, it was more about what do you need to accomplish? And so that's what we decided uh, last year with my colleague, Simon St. Laurent. We decided that we needed to change it so that it was more, more about scalability, collaboration, uh, security, architecture, these issues that were actually coming up for developers instead of this is how you do this with Python. Um, you'll find some of that in some of the sessions, but we really wanted it to be, uh, here's your problem, here's your solution. And I think if you were to stay with a track an entire time, it, it does tell a story uh, through the three days that we have it. So uh, we have an OSCON, right? Uh, the OS in OSCON is open source. Is that just limited to, let's say, open source software, or maybe is there a little hardware sprinkled inside there? There is a little bit of hardware sprinkled in. And I think more importantly, what you're going to see is that, and this is something else that we, uh, maybe a lot of people have seen, but that open source and developer was almost um, redundant. And that, I mean, you've heard everyone, you know, open source has won. And I agree, it has. What developers, it's, it's unlikely that you're a developer and you aren't using some sort of open source. So something that we wanted to make sure of was that, of course, we support open source. You'll see, I mean, you know, 90% of the, of the program is open source, but that it's kind of ubiquitous. You, you know, whatever you use, you could use something proprietary with, uh, you know, Java or with a certain framework. And so we wanted to make sure that that, we wanted to make sure that we were including people that didn't necessarily identify themselves as open source developers because we just think everyone is. And so, as you also mentioned, there's definitely hardware as a piece of that, especially with the, the whole IoT um, evolution. And so we have a hardware showcase, which is really cool, where you can just see cool things. Like um, we have a session with the guys that made the $9 um, computer, which I think will be cool. And, um, you know, we explore sort of like there's the open hardware movement. Um, and it's kind of, you know, like for software engineers to dip a toe into that area. Because, I mean, you don't know... 
it's very unlikely that you're going to be doing the same thing throughout your career. So hardware, I think, is in a lot of people's future. Okay, so uh, can you give me a little idea? Like I, I, I did mention I haven't been there before. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I say newbie to the conference. What can sure. I expect when I get there? How's the uh, vibe, the environment? Is there a place to drink? Uh, so, so it's <laughs> at the uh, Oregon Convention Center, which is a great place. And uh, it's really big, and we take up about half of it. When you go in, I think what you'll notice is that there is a large hallway track and that there are people that have been there for years that are talking and they haven't seen each other. This is where they meet up. And then there are newbies. I think that very quickly we'll, you'll find someone to talk to. So there's a, there's a very vibrant uh, networking track. Um, and then there's all of the different sessions. So I think there's, a, I feel like there's a combination of there's a really friendly vibe. People are happy that you're there. They're excited to talk about something they're excited about. Um, and then there's all of the sessions. You know, it's always, I think it's always difficult to figure out one, which session to go to, and then what do I not go to that session? And do I then, you know, go to the networking, you know, track, the hallway track? And then as far as the actual city, Portland is just amazing. And they have a light rail called the Max. And, and you can just basically be in downtown Portland in literally five minutes. And there's lots and lots of drinking establishments there. So <laughs> no worries there. Well, it does sound super interesting. Uh, yeah. Okay. So if you do have something like, uh, let's say for open hardware, uh, how easy is it, is it to like for me to submit a talk to the, uh, to the conference? Sure. Sure. So we have an open uh, CFP. I believe since we're going to have the event in May of next year, it's going to open up in October. So we have a couple months where you can uh, you can put your proposal in. And I welcome any and all proposals. I mean, take a look at what we've done this year. We'll, of course, make some tweaks as things move along. But I mean, basically, what makes a good proposal is one, um, take the time to do an actual good proposal. Um, it really makes a difference and it stands out. Also, if you have some video, if you can attach to it, it gives us an, uh, an example of what your talk would be like. But basically, again, um, something that is timely, something that uh, you can tie into the greater uh, software community. Um, so like the, so for open hardware, like the, the $9 um, computer. So immediately I was like, man, people are going to want to know about that. So, you know, finding out in, in that case, it's going to be a story of what did and didn't work. So there's, that's great. It's great to see patterns. It's great to see case studies. Um, and it's great to um, sort of have, you know, um, just start, start people down a path and give them ideas on how to solve problems. So uh, let's say the the age range. I know that plays out. Uh, that that's something important for a lot of uh, and people, mm -hmm. you know, getting into the interest in the into the industry rather. Uh, sure. What's the age range there? Uh, age range. See, I'm. I need more coffee today. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. What, go ahead. Uh, so first of all, what's really cool is that on the the Sunday before OzCon, we actually have Kids Day. And so that brings the age range way down. I believe we have maybe seven or eight year olds up to 18 year olds. And we have a hundred of them coming in on that day uh, to learn Raspberry Pi, to learn Minecraft, um, Arduino stuff. So that's super fun. And then once you get to the uh, OzCon proper, I would say, honestly, it's from 20s on up. There, there really is, I have to say, um, and I've seen this shift over the last few years, uh, all different types of people, women, men, old, young, all different, you know, hardware, web apps, um, you know, Docker, like just, it's really a great, great mix. And and that's one of the, the great things about it is that you can, I would say like, okay, so COBOL isn't used that much anymore, but like, imagine the stuff you could like learn from talking to like some guy that used COBOL for like, you know, 20 years ago. I don't know. I just feel like it expands your mind in a way that you wouldn't normally do uh, day to day in the office. No, oh, I know. I, I personally have a lot of fun uh, talking with people, you know, long bearded uh, developers <laughs> in this case. Uh, yeah, because, you know, they they talk to you about, uh, uh, as you as you said, you know, these uh, like really old languages like Cobalt. Uh, you know, I'm the uh, oldest one I know is like C, right? right? So <laughs> yeah. you know, it's not that old, but, you know, it's not, it's yeah. not you know, it's not young either way. So, yeah, I, 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 I totally understand. Uh, you know, I, I did have something I did want to uh, ask you, and I just totally went off in another different place. But maybe you can give us a little idea of uh, what what it is to be the programming chair at OSCON. Sure, sure. Um, <clears throat> like I said, it's my privilege. It's been so fantastic. It's really given me an idea of what 
the entire uh, space is like in open source and programming. And so um, it's a little bit about, uh, you know, we get this tw these 1,200 proposals in. Thank goodness we have a committee that helps look through them. And then it's about crafting that program so that you make sure that you hit the hot topics, you make sure that you hit the fundamentals, and you make sure, I mean, one of the things that we've been talking about uh, at O'Reilly is that basically, you know, whether you're... Um, you know, T-shaped or um, whatever type of engineer you're going to be, like basically be an engineer, be really good at what you do, think about what you do. And so keeping those, those core ideas of what we are thinking about when we produce content and making sure that that is infused into our events. So keeping that in mind, keeping the idea of the, the hot topics, finding, you know, a good mix of people that you know have something great to say and people that maybe haven't said anything yet, but you know are diamonds in the rough. That is always fantastic too. Um, and seeing somehow making it all hang together in the event that is OSCON. Uh, diamond in the rough. That, I, that sounds like me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. No, yeah. My my question came back to me. I, I'm sorry. Oh, you know, lack of coffee, as I mentioned. Uh, you, you did mention uh, ladies go to the uh, conference. Uh, what's the percentage there uh, between, uh, you know, male programmers and, and, uh, sure. and male attendees in this case and women? And, and is it a safe environment for them? Sure. I mean, I don't have the exact number. I want to say it's like 15% uh, ladies. It could even be more. Um, I think it's a very safe environment. I haven't had any issues. Certainly, if we, if anyone ever came across any issues, we would take care of it right away. Like I said, I think in general, it's a really welcoming uh, event and audience. And we do um, a lot to make sure we have, uh, at lunch, we have the women in programming tables so everybody can commiserate. But I think even beyond that, it's just, it's a bunch of cool people. I think, thankfully, most people are pretty great and they want to share what they've learned. And... Um, I think you'll find a strong presence of, of um, community and that I think I, I would hope that the, all of the, the women that have been to OSCON in the past would agree with me, I think. Uh, so, you know, I know a lot of the uh, people here in the uh, SCALE conference. I don't know if you've been to the uh, LA one. I haven't. The, I know, know about oh. it, though. Uh, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> so uh, I know Garrett's going to be super happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, may, maybe you can mention uh, what type of, uh, of coordination goes on in the background with tools and such. Do you guys uh, make your own apps to, you know, let people know what conference to go to? I mean, what track to go to, stuff like that? So we do have, we do a lot of, uh, we have an email campaign. We have a blog on the site. Um, we have an app for when you're actually uh, at the event. And we actually have a new one. Uh, it's, it's, we just launched it at, at uh, some, another event we have called Solid, which is actually all about hardware and IoT. And um, it's going to have a lot of cool things. It has a social aspect. It, um, it, you can make, of course, your own schedule. Uh, it can tell you, it, it updates uh way better than the one that we had before. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think it's keeping an eye on um, our radar site. It's keeping an eye on OzCon.com. And it's also making sure that um, you're taking everything in. Like when you come in for the day, there's, um, you can see what's up for the day. There's uh, boards up that talk about, you know, hey, we're gonna have a birds of a feather over here. Definitely stop by the O'Reilly booth on the expo hall floor. We're, uh, we also do interviews, which we, we haven't started to schedule yet, but we'll have that also on the expo hall floor. So outside of sessions, there's, like I said, there's a lot to do. So I think it's kind of like keep your head on a swivel and uh, see sort of where everyone's going. All right. And what is the, uh, is this only an English thing, uh, like an English language uh, uh, conference, or are there different tracks for different uh you know, uh, uh, languages, different people. Is this more international or is it only U.S. based? It is. So we do have um, some international audience, but all of the sessions and tutorials are in English. Okay. Well, yeah, just in case, you know, I'm bilingual, so I, you know. Sure. So I can usually, you know, go to conferences where they manage one language or the other and I can get yep. a mix from both of them, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. No, that's really cool. Is there a spin-off uh, conference that came out of this? I know you mentioned, uh, you mentioned, um, which one was it? Um, solid. solid. Solid, yeah, you mentioned Solid. Is that something that uh, grew out of OSCON? So we have a lot of different conferences. And I, I, well, I wouldn't say necessarily that they literally spin off. I do think of OSCON as sort of like the big mama of our conferences. And, you know, it's the one that encompasses um, 
horizontally the most content. So we also have Solid, which I mentioned, which is um, sort of the world of IoT and the hardware startups. We have um, Strata, which is all about data, which is um, super explosive right now. We have uh, Velocity, which covers uh, a lot on uh, networking and infrastructure and containers. We have Fluent, which is um, you know a lot on basically the front end uh, JavaScript development. Uh, something that we're launching in January is a design conference, and that's something that my colleague uh, Mary Tressler has been working a lot on, and that's I think going to be something really great. Um, and the other two. Uh, things that we're starting are um, sort of like the future of, and we're going to do uh, the future of business and the future of money. So there are a lot of events going on and we definitely, um, you know, we learn from each other and what's going on. And uh, I definitely look and borrow from them when they're doing something cool or if I see something totally amazing and I hope they do the same for me. So conferences are like this super energetic uh, mix of people, right? Uh, is, oh, is yes. there something, yeah, yeah it is. Uh, is, there some, is there something that uh, grew out of uh, uh, OSCON, maybe a project that you know started off as maybe two people sitting down at the uh, bar there and it just flourished oh, into something well-known? That's a good question. Um, I unfortunately don't know that. I know that as far as O'Reilly editors, it's a great place to talk to people about projects. And I know that many, many books and videos and have, have come out of OzCon. I don't know, unfortunately, if some pro I have to think there have been. Um, I don't know if, if literally like back of the napkin type of thing has happened. I hope it has. Or if it hasn't, let's make sure that happens this year. <laughs> what other, um, I mean, we mentioned beer, and uh, some other things that are going on. I know that something that's been popular in, uh, uh, you know, especially at developer conferences recently are the extracurricular <laughs> activities, if you will. Sure. Um, you know, down at scale, they always do a board game or they have been anyway. The times that I've been there, they do a board game night uh, yep. and, and kind of a video game night where and it, it's, it's really popular. And it's nice because it gets... It, with this crowd, we tend to be a little bit more shy and withdrawn, I think, in general. And it just helps kind of like bring everybody, get everybody out of their skin and, and you know, you start meeting new people and things like that. So, um, I mean, are, is there anything else that we haven't covered already that, that OSCON, that, that typically happens at OSCON um, outside of the main sessions and, sure. and training? So, no, I think, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, for anyone, uh, walking up to strangers is difficult. And so it's great to provide those opportunities. So we, of course, we have an attendee party which uh, I forget what day that is, Monday or Tuesday, which is great. We actually have a 5K uh, race that runs through some of Portland. We have a hackathon area. Uh, we have different tables that bring people together uh, at lunch, uh, you know, if you're into Python or if you're into microservices. Uh, we have that. We have birds of a feather that people uh, put together. We have uh, Ignite, which is something that we talk about. I mean, I'm sorry, which we is an event we have in the evening. Um, so, oh, and we have... For instance, we have like um, the downtime room. I forget exactly what we call it, but it's kind of like the quiet room where you can go and relax and recharge, which I think is important because like you said, it's super high energy. Uh, and we have actually yoga in the morning as well. So I don't know if I can get up that early, but it's definitely <laughs> something for something for everyone. Yeah, that's a, there's a lot of stuff, man. I didn't realize there was all that. I think that's great though, because like you said, it is a community. This is a, a community of developers and um, that's what always impressed me about going to these shows is that, you know, you show up, you're not really sure what to do. And all of a sudden you start having a conversation with someone and you find out, oh yeah, I'm into open source or, you know, open hardware. And, um, you know, oh yeah, I like Python too. And, uh, here's what I like about it. And, and, um, I don't know, it, it, in the Bay area, I find it a little bit easier to run into those folks in my daily mm -hmm. routine. But, um, you know, when I was in Ohio, especially, it was like, man, I felt like I was on an island until I went to, you know, one of these conferences. And then it was like, oh, there are other people like me. This is great. So really glad to hear that you're um, doing some of those extracurricular activities, if you will, um, as well, because I really do, do think it, it helps bring out yeah, the... Yeah, I think... Uh, I think um Go ahead. Sorry. I, I was going to say, I think the um, the board game and video game idea is a great idea and I, I'd like to implement that. So I think that's that's another good one we should add. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're, you know, the nerds, we're all into the video games, right? And got kind of like a shirt yeah. on. Um, it's always a good thing. Um, I wanted to ask another question, which is... Um, and I forgot it now. Um, oh, I know what it was. It was about chip. You mentioned chip, the $9 computer coming. Yep. Um, 
I don't know if you know, if you can give us a preview of that. I know that there's been a little bit of some issues in terms of Linux kernel, you know, making sure everything's open source and the Linux, Linux kernel yep. and, and things like that. Is that some of what they're going to be talking about? So I think they're going to be talking about the journey. So part of that will definitely cover that topic area. I know there has been some issue recently, but... Uh, as far as I know, they're they're sailing through that and coming through the other side, and everything is going to be fine. But I think that that's um, that's something that's really important to share with people. You know, who are the next people that are going to come out with the you know five dollar board or something similar? Because these are issues I think that you're going to see come up uh, again and again. Yeah, absolutely. I, I know that we have a. Um, uh, uh, someone who did a Kickstarter here uh, in our in our local makerspace has successfully funded Kickstarter, and they went through some of that as well. And they're going to be doing um, a, a talk. We asked them to do a talk on that specifically for that reason. It's kind of like mm -hmm. you have to learn from each other and figure out, you know, what went wrong, and you know what you didn't know that you know now, and how would you do things differently, and um, it helps everybody be successful. So that's great. Um, yeah. So we mentioned video games. Are there is there any uh, you know uh, video game on Linux talks or um, you know certainly video games seem to be coming along quite nicely in the, yep. in the Linux space. Um, any any talks on video games? So um, the one that we, we have a games talk, uh, but it it is around Android. So we have that, and then we have um, the intro to Rust is interesting for uh, game developers because from what I've heard, that's something that instead of C++, they're using Rust because it uh, has all the power of C++, but it also has uh, safety built in uh, instead of, I guess, I guess in C++, it's really easy to have an error in there and uh, not know about it, and then someone can go back and, and hack into there and mess up everything. And so Rust seems to be like an answer to that. So we have those, those are two tutorials. Um, and then those are the, the two ways we're covering uh, gaming. But I agree, I mean like, so Steam OS is something that I've kept my eye on. Um, we've done some iOS stuff, which I know isn't open source, but now Swift is open source, which is super cool. Um, so that covers the, the game stuff. I, I personally do love gaming, so I would love to see more of that. Um, you know, uh, virtual reality, is starting to to actually be something I think that we can uh, do at a price that actually makes sense that you could possibly buy it. Uh, so that'll be something that we'll be covering um, soon. I think we had a VR uh, session that ended up being canceled, unfortunately. But so that's that's definitely on our on our horizon. Oh, that's good to hear. And you mentioned Android as well, which is uh, mm -hmm. another topic that's near and dear to my heart. Um, and you know. It, uh, I always make the argument when talking to people and they say, oh, the Linux desktop, you know, it never happened or, you know, nobody uses the Linux desktop or Linux never really made it mainstream. And it's like I always just point to my phone and say, dude, you know, <laughs> Linux yeah. kernel's running on this device. I mean, you can't say that it hasn't made it yeah. or it didn't succeed because it's there. Um, any any Android? I mean, you mentioned some already. Yeah, there's a gaming one. But I mean, any, any other Android uh, talks going on? So um, Android, I believe we have a design talk as well. Um, I want to say we have a wearables talk, uh, but Android's great. I mean, it's it's just great to see what people are doing with this, and they're getting more and more libraries built in with both um, both iOS and Android, so that you can do more and more, um, whether it be games or something for your home or something like the health kit that they have. So. Um, it's really it's really great to see that, and 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 I'm actually excited to see. So now that Glass is sort of like. I don't know, maybe run its course as sort of like the newfangled thing. What's going to be next? Um, and, you know, how are they going to really innovate with uh, Android Wear? And where's that going? And they're getting into cars now. So there's lots of cool stuff happening with Android. Um, and we have, you know, we have a whole mobile track, uh, which covers Android, but also covers, um, you know, stuff like HTML and CSS and making an actually great app, no matter what type of framework that you actually use. Cool. Sorry, cool. I, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Guillermo. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, I, something just popped into my mind here. Uh, I have a lot of friends who unfortunately work uh, with uh, .NET. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, they're getting better. That. They're getting better. Yeah. They're they're getting, yeah. Uh, but, but, you know, what kind of companies that actually go to uh, OSCON or at least maybe the center developers there? I know Microsoft's trying to do a lot of uh, open sourcing yeah. you know, recently. Uh, yeah. Do you run into them and do you maybe, uh, you know, uh, 
I, I don't know, uh, pick them up afterwards or what happens? Yeah, so, so Microsoft has been a big part of OzCon uh, for many years. And um, in the past, I think that, you know, developers who've used Microsoft have been a little bit in a walled garden just because, you know, they use .NET, they use C Sharp. Um, and so they didn't, didn't sort of like, I guess, mingle with the other developers. But I really think that's changing in a really cool way. I mean, Azure, you can use Node.js on it, which is really cool. Um, you know, uh, basically when the apps came out, you can use uh, JavaScript now, you can use C++. I think that wall is really starting to crumble. And the angle that we're looking at with Microsoft is um, is that open source side. Like what can you do with, um, you know, ASP.NET, and incorporate some open source framework. And, and the cool thing is that, one, um, that you can give feedback to Microsoft that they'll then incorporate, which is really cool. But I think that, I think that C Sharp, when it came out, it was, came out at a time so that they could say like, okay, everybody knows C Sharp. Now you can do anything from like a server app to um, something really light and do a website. Um, and people don't need that anymore. And so I think that's crumbling down, whereas C Sharp is still good for some things. I've seen a lot of Microsoft um, uh, evangelists saying, no, JavaScript, use it. Use it on our platform. You can use it. Um, and Azure seems like just sort of like the gateway. It seems like a powerful thing that you can use just a bunch of different um, stuff on there. And, and it, it is encouraged. So I think that over the years, um, they've gotten more and more open. I, I don't think you can uh, can refute that. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, they've, they've been there for a long time and um, they get beat up sometimes. But I, I think they're really doing <laughs> cool things. Well, that's great. Uh, you also mentioned that wearables. That is something that might actually, you know, gear me to, you know, convince me totally. Uh, okay, yeah, I don't need convincing. You know, I do want to go there. <laughs> to, to, <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you the truth. Uh, and I will see you there next year. I, I can yes. assure you that much. Uh, but uh, let's say you mentioned wearables. That is something I am very passionate ab about. I, I like I like smart watches. I have plenty of them, you know, uh, stacked around my room here. Uh, it, have you? Uh, what kind of talks can somebody expect? You know, uh, regarding wearables. Um, may, maybe uh, I, I know there is like the uh, Meta Watch, which is you know open source. Is is that something mm -hmm. you might find there? So I don't know if we have the Meta Watch. We do, like I said, we have the hardware showcase and some of that definitely is around wearables. I mean, the thing that's interesting to me about wearables is, so there's the form and function part, the hardware, but it's sort of, to me, like a renaissance for Linux. So it's another reason to know Linux. It's another reason maybe to go back and learn C because you need to get close to the metal and figure out, oh, I don't have enough um, power to do this or I need it to last 24 hours. So to me, when thinking about wearables, you know, sure, there'll be, you know, one or two on like making a cool wearable app. But to me, it's like, what are the underlying concepts that help you to um, engineer a great wearable? And that is, you need to know Linux. You need to possibly know C. You need to think about power consumption and all of these different constraints that, you know, in your iPhone now, it's like, that's like a, basically a laptop in your pocket. So with the wearables, it's kind of like the breaking down of all of that and figuring out sort of best practices that you might have like cast off because you haven't had to think about them for a while and, and re-implementing those and figuring out how to work more closely with the hardware, um, where in many cases you haven't had to do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, um, we're getting close to the end of our time here. I just wanted to ask before we got, you know, completely done here, is there anything we missed? Is there anything that you really wanted to let people know about that we didn't cover today? Um, people obviously still have time to, to yep. sign up and get tickets and all that good stuff, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. I think, you know, even uh, I want to say on site you can buy tickets, but I hope that's true. Um, I, you know, I just I'm so proud of what we've done with it. I, uh, the event, I think that it's a reflection of what's going on. I think that people that attend are going to find, you know, if they're having scaling issues, security issues, that they're going to find that they're going to find, um, you know, how to solve problems. They're going to find how to be a better engineer. They're going to learn how to collaborate and they're going to learn how open source not only is something that you use uh, in languages or to code, but it's something that can transform a company to keep pace with the rate of change that they need to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe if John still has it, if we have the website, we can bring the website up. I'm assuming this is the best place to uh, to go if you're, if you're interested, which is oscon.com, correct? 
That is correct. That is that is the headquarters. And will you be streaming any of these uh, talks or the keynotes or anything? If uh, maybe after the fact, will things be posted online? Yep. So we stream all of the keynotes, so that'll be live. And then we will be posting interviews uh, during OzCon that will live on uh, YouTube afterwards. So some of the speakers that are talking, we'll talk to some of the uh, the program chair, some of the sponsors. So lots of good content. And then we actually, we record the entire thing and then it's for sale after at O'Reilly.com and Safari. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So people can check that out. Now, I don't know, are you a developer yourself? I am not. I just know about the development world. <laughs> Okay, because I was going to ask, you know, we always have these questions that we ask. Usually we get either program managers or, or developers on. We have these questions that we ask about favorite scripting language and whether you prefer VI or Emacs. Um, I don't know if you actually have an answer for that if you're not a developer. but I don't. I can tell you the coolest video game I played uh, most oh, recently. Okay. Uh, it was Last of Us, which I thought was just amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. That was um, great. It is a good game. I have not gotten into it yet, but um, it's oh, I bought so it. good. I've I've got it. Uh, it's loaded on my <laughs> on my PC, so um, I've got a ton of games that I just ha don't have time to play, unfortunately. But that's that's awesome. Uh, Guillermo, any last thoughts or questions? Uh, Last of Us is a very good game. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great. You know, well, I, Rachel, I, I, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to close it out. So, Rachel, thanks for yeah. joining us today. Uh, it's been really great to talk to you. I hope that everybody in the area um, or even not in the area has a chance to go to OSCON, uh, can make some time and go. Because I know it's uh, it's always a lot of fun and I never hear any um, bad things about it. And I always hear just good things. So that's good. In fact, uh, I'll talk about it in just a minute. But we're actually going to be doing a show from OSCON coming up um, uh, during the event. So we'll talk about that when we get to upcoming episodes. But I just wanted to thank you for joining us today and talking about OSCON. Thank you so much, both of you. It's been a pleasure. All right. So that was our preview of OSCON. We like to do these occasionally for some of the uh, community uh, open source events around. I know we do one for scale as well, uh, which is great. Um, uh, what do you think, Guillermo? Are you, you excited to, to uh, pack up and head to OSCON next year? Oh, I am. I am. I, you know, it's been, it's one of those conferences that I always say I'm going to go, but then yeah. something embedded pops up and then I, you know, I have I have to go to the, to that one also, so right. it kind of beats it out. But you know, now I'm I'm totally convinced. Yeah, yeah. No, I've wanted to go even you know, like I said, since before I came to California, um, and you know, probably next year might have been the year that I could go. But now, and since it's not going to be in Portland, I don't know if I can go. We'll see. I'll try <laughs> to get there. Uh, Austin's a little bit further away for me than than Portland, so <laughs> we'll see. But that's good that they're mixing it up. I mean, there's uh, it's it's hard with these conferences. Um, you know, there's not always one close to where you're at. And so some people end up traveling. I know we had people even at the Ohio Linux Fest that came from, you know, half of the country away to come to that conference. And it's a little crazy, but uh, um, but it's always a lot of fun. So people should definitely check it out. Speaking about uh, checking things out, we should probably take a look at what's coming up for Floss Weekly on our calendar. Um, it looks like next week uh, is going to be, we're going to be talking about Digicam. Uh, if you're not familiar with Digicam, Digicam is, um, uh, I believe it's uh, open source software that lets you do video chat and um, uh, I'm trying to look here. Let's see. I thought it also lets you do uh, kind of a, oh, it's a digital photo management application. I thought it was an online chat application. Maybe that's Talkie. Maybe I'm getting it mixed up. So it's a photo, digital photo management application. It runs on Linux, Windows, and uh, Mac, but it's open source. So we're going to be talking to the developers about that. And then, as I mentioned before, um, the week after that, July 22nd, we're going to be doing a show from OSCON. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, and we'll be hopefully picking up one of the keynote speakers or something like that to talk to. Um, and then on July 29th, this is what I was thinking of. We're going to be having the developers of Talkie on. Talkie.io is that website. If you want to look up, uh, get a preview of your own for that episode. Uh, this is the video chat uh, application and they do screen sharing for small groups. So it's, it's from what I understand of it, um, it's a little bit like um, uh, Hangouts when Hangouts first came out, you know, kind of like screen sharing and video chat, really simple to use, good for groups, things like that. So we'll be talking to the developers of Talkie um, about their project. So that's what's coming up. Randall will be back eventually. 
um, to talk about all of these things. I know everybody misses him when he's not here, but hey, you got us. What, can, what more can you ask for? Um, Guillermo, what's going on in your uh, neck of the woods? What do you want to plug? What are you up to? Uh, well, I am, as I, I think I mentioned before, on at least I mentioned before on the show, I am relaunching my YouTube channel. So if uh, anybody wants to watch me do crazy things with stuff I have behind me or play video games and stuff, uh, just either look look me up on Twitter. That's at G-A-M-A-R-A-L. And there's a little link there to my channel. You can just click that. It's going to be easier than telling you that crazy uh, URL thing. And uh, uh, that's pretty much it, really. Uh, uh, just uh, keep watching the show. I, I hope everybody here is liking how we are covering for Randall right now. So you mentioned, I hope we did a good job anyway. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. No, it's always good to talk to you and have you on. It's nice to have a like-minded person. Um, I'm sure if we wanted to, we could just do a whole show about the projects we're working on and open hardware and all that kind of great stuff. But um, thanks for being that, here. That's a great idea. Yeah, we really should. Hint, hint. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Open hardware. Um, uh, as far as I'm concerned, if you want to follow me, Google Plus is typically where I hang out in terms of social media. You can find me on Plus, Aaron Newcomb uh, on Google Plus. And I, uh, I do respond if you uh, have something, if you find something interesting that I'm talking about or you want to send something my way, that's the best way to do it. Um, also, if you're in the California area, Northern California area, um, you know, check out BeniciaMakerspace.org. I'm the president of that organization. It's a makerspace I started in town here, and we're doing our grand opening this weekend. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun. So we're actually, after working on this for a couple of years, we're actually launching it, getting it off the ground, taking memberships. So that'll be a lot of fun too. Um, and uh, so I, it seems like I work a lot on that these days. Um, also co-host other podcasts here on the Twit Network. Uh, all about Android and um, This Week in Google occasionally and other shows. So um, you might have seen me recently on the uh, Google I.O. coverage. So I try to try to do a lot of that too because uh, uh, I have a lot of varied interests, I guess you could say. Um, so I think that's it. I think that's everything. So thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully you'll tune in next time and be, be on the lookout for our upcoming OSCON show from OSCON. But until then... You're watching Floss Weekly.